these ones as well, huh? <laughs> That's what I like about these ones as well. Did you say something about the top I was wearing? Oh, I've just gone now, actually. <laughs> this was a present. It beat Bowes, Keith. Enough is enough. Keith, Keith, what's this Keith out? What'd you say, Keith? I said it beats Bowes. How can you let the young lad wear a Bowes top? Come on. I don't let him. I just I just went with it. He usually copies me, Keith, for everything else, would you believe? And uh, this is the only so that's interesting, isn't it? Um, I don't know what you're <laughs> It's the people in class and Dawson the boys from Ashburn and stuff like that. So, uh, right, here we go. Anyway, see, people are watching. Anyway, so guys, anyway, yeah, so finish hungry now, Republic of Ireland now, obviously. Um, you know, if you didn't watch the game, lads, it actually sounds like, oh, it was a boring game. But actually, I know there wasn't loads and loads of chances, but I thought it was a very intriguing match, believe it or not, tactically as well. I know in midfield, Especially in the first half was very congested and Ireland matched them up there. Both played three at the back. Like Ireland, I'll just look at Ireland's team quickly. I'll just go through the team quickly. Bazoon and goal. You darted your right wing back. You left wing back, James McLean, who I thought done quite well in that role, actually. You had Egan, Duffy and uh, O'Shea centre back. Midfield, you had Horahan and Jason Knight and who else? Josh Cullen. And then you tried Parra kind of in behind uh, Adam Eda, although I thought Parra was a little bit lost in this game. But um, look, I thought overall it was a good performance. There's five players in that starting 11, lads under 22. You know what I mean? That's a big thing as well. And Daz is just joining now. But um, how are you, Daz? But, um, yeah, Hi, lads. Go for how are we? Go for your thoughts overall? Who wants to go first? You go, Sean. Yeah, I thought uh, similar enough that the um, second half was a big improvement on the first half. I think the most exciting moment in the first half was when RT showed the team line up and it had Shane Duffy playing at left wing. I was very disappointed that didn't happen. Um, uh, but um, in the second half, they um, uh, they really, uh, you know, they created a few chances. Um, Ogbeni was really impressive when he came on. Uh, I know he only played a few minutes, but he was very dynamic. Uh, Daryl Horgan played very well, I thought, as well. I agree with the point of Tri Parrot. I thought it was a bit lost. Uh, maybe he's better off playing further forward. But I thought Adam Ida led the line uh, very well. Uh, you know, he, he he played very well in the number nine role. Um, I uh, I think a draw on the balance of play was probably a fair result. I thought, you know, there was still one or two things I would have fixed. I thought defending, you know, we gave the ball away an awful lot and Hungary could have punished us once or twice. But, you know, look, uh, it's, it's a good result and we look to be building, so... Yeah, what did you keep think, Keith? I, I said to the lads before the game, I would have taken a good performance and a draw, and I think that's what we got. Um, certainly, like, Hungary, I said the other night, Hungary are now mugs. You know, they're going to the Euros, and they're going there on merit. They won a playoff at the end of the day, like, so we didn't. Um, it probably meant more. I don't know who it meant more to. Um, we were obviously under pressure to get a result, keep the momentum going. They were under pressure to get a good result going into the Euros. Uh I, I, echo echo what, they played a strong 11 actually on the as well. I echo what Sean said. Like, like Duffy, Duffy was immense at the back. I know Kenny Cunningham gave him the man the match. Uh, I thought Jace Knight was, was pretty impressive as well. We gave the ball away in silly areas sometimes. And as Sean already said, it could have punished us. But mm. neither team really threatened the goal. Um, Egan had the header in the first half to hit the bar. Very unlucky. And their big centre forward, whose name um, I'm not sure of, he, he caused Duffy a few problems. But uh, all in all, it's 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 a positive result. It, it keeps the it keeps the momentum going after Andorra. So we'll see where it takes us in um, into the into the qualifiers. I think that's it too. You mentioned there, Keith, before about the dads there about um, the fact that, like, you know what I mean? Who are we to think we can just turn up and be hungry as well? Like, that's that's a point as well. Like, you know what I mean? As I said, five players starters under 22 uh, and all contributed fairly well, except, as I said, Paris seemed to be lost. We didn't know what to do in the game, in my opinion. We put the Ida, Tom B. I think he was a little lost, but he's probably the rawest of the players because he's been playing left or at least playing at uh, a lower level. Say. Dallas, what did you think overall yourself? Hi lads, how are we? Um, yeah, look, um, I was hoping for a win. I kind of 
Well, we might get in, but we didn't. There was no little... Look, I think a, a lot of people have to me said this, yes. Um, we lost this 2 or 3 nil tonight. Our keepers were fantastic. They made some really good saves for such young keepers. Both of them did. You know, both of them pushed each other tonight. They were excellent saves that really pulled it out of the back tonight. Kept us in this game, you know. I don't think we really tested Hungary too much. We didn't really test our keeper or... And we, when we did go forward, when we actually did shoot, it was good. And when Bennett came on, he had some serious by five minutes. I would have liked to have seen him for the whole game. We could have won the game with him on the pitch, had he played the full game. I think Duffy had a good game. Um, he was due a good game. Um, I'm delighted he had a good game. It was good for him that he had a good game. Like you were saying yourself there, Keith, with Tri Parry, he was a bit lost. You were right, like he wasn't really making them runs or he was a bit static and you know, he wasn't really getting in behind at times or I I just knew him was good. I thought I thought he was good and he, he had a bit of things going for him. Um McLean was going forward when he could. Darty he, he just wouldn't go forward. He just kept passing it backwards and sideways. It's okay. And in the midfield then calling a few times the balls he put in were good, but there's other times it didn't even didn't even hit anyone like so that was a bit of a concern but overall look it was a friendly and you know I, I think Stephen Kennedy's starting to try and get you know to get team better playing so yeah look it's a draw hungry you're going to the Euros we're not um, they're in a major tournament again we're not um, I, I used to give everyone a run out too so yeah that's an interesting point to make about oh, well, Benny the only thing is I would say for that um yeah, he looks like a player who can add pace to our team exactly and gives us an option. But I wonder, he came on against tired players. So, um, you look, that's a positive as well that you can do that in games, which is someone like that who could come on and maybe a Connolly in the future as well, type thing. But uh, I was very impressed with Adam Ida tonight because the service, like the service, number one, wasn't brilliant overall to him. He didn't really have anyone coming close and linking up with him. Yet he held the ball up, I thought, brilliantly at times, uh, ran the challenge as well. There was one ball that might. Howard actually, he should have played him left quickly and he could have been in. He failed to see him, he got smothered. I don't remember that with four or five players. And um, so, his movement, everything he could do on the night was spot on. You know what I mean? And that's what he offers you. And that's the thing I like about Ida that even with little service and all, he can still perform and kind of shape the game. Like, that's the thing on the night. He's gone frozen. Oh, no, Sean, can you hear me there? Yeah, were you impressed with Ida tonight? Hang on, sorry, you're breaking up there. You asked the question. Uh, were you impressed with him on the night? Uh, yeah, I thought I was impressed on the night now. Um, for, I, I think, uh, going forward, I think, um, you know, we've got a surprising amount of options. Um, I think, uh, you know, when you look at, um, I think the trouble is uh, we have we have it now at right back as well. You know, you have James Coleman and Matt Darty, and you're trying to play your best, trying to play all your best players. And I think that's something we're going to have to experiment with. Um, with uh, Ida and Parrot, uh, can you play the two of them beside each other? It doesn't, it, you know, it doesn't look like you can. It doesn't look like you can play one in front of the other. Um and as well as that, you know, we're forgetting, you know, Aaron Connolly is injured. You know, he could be another player that'll be competing for a striking spot. Uh, I suppose it's good in a way to be deciding, you know, who you'd rather take as, the, as opposed to who you'd rather, you know, not, you know, who you, who's the least bad player. Um, but uh, I think based on tonight's performance, um, Adam Ida would be the number one choice to play striker and to try and build the attack around him. Uh, now it is it is only one game, and you know I'm sure we'll see more from Troy Parrot, and you know he'll give out a competition. But um, uh, it's it's still it's still very encouraging going forward. Yeah, understand, Keith. Yeah, a point there actually um, that Sean made. I was going to talk about actually there as well. Is that it's going to do with Mac Doherty really? Because uh, for me, same as Coleman all day long. Heather Doherty, I don't think Doherty has performed for Ireland. He's twenty top. <laughs> Formed. And tonight, I think that was referenced it earlier on, he wasn't really getting formed. McLean was far better than the uh, wing back of the two, in my opinion. Uh, I don't know, you've no excuse tonight either. He's playing his best position, wing back role. 
Um, I'm not sure what it is with Pat Doherty, but he's underwhelmed for Ireland so far, in my opinion. You'd expect he more. He definitely has. He definitely has. I don't know what it is. Um, like, as you said, he's playing the same position he plays with his club, like, whether it be Wolves or his few guys or scores. But to touch on the defence, I think to balance things out, we need a left-sided centre-half to be playing. If we're playing at three, we certainly need a left-sided centre-half. So whether that's whether that's Peter or whether that's... Um, like, Egan, O'Shea, they're all right-footed. Uh, Duffy's right foot, so there was no balance in the back three in the center halves. So, um, defensively, I think under Kenny, we've been all right. We've been all right. It's it's about putting the ball in the net. We haven't scored many goals again tonight. It's a nil all draw, you know. We went to Serbia, got two, and Dory expect to score four, but yeah. Touching on Sean's point, definitely Ida is the is the four point of or he, he definitely should be a starter for us. And then you have Conley coming off one side and A and other off the other. Um I thought Malumbi played, he added a bit of energy when he came on. Um Cullen set pieces, I think Daz you touched on his set pieces weren't great. Um particularly with the with the with the threat that Duffy offers going forward. Um but uh yeah, Matt Doherty. Mm, I, I definitely, even at Seamus Coleman's age, I I still have him starting at at, at the wing back at the wing back row. I think I'll chase the left centre back tonight, and that being good honest. I, I can bear, I can barely make out. Sorry, I heard left. I, I heard left foot center of half. <laughs> Hello. Well, I thought Darren Shays. I thought Darren Shays struggled as a left center half. Yeah. Look. Um. I think it's this one of the games for him. The thing is, we know he can play a left back. We know he can play left centre back. We know he can play a, a whole way across the back four. I think it was just a game he's struggling. Um, I would be pretty confident playing in the back in any position in the back. He did he did struggle there tonight. And like you said there yourself, Key, we don't really have a left foot centre half. Bar Clark, who obviously wasn't there tonight who had an okay season with Newcastle, you know, who was playing a lot of games. So he is someone like we will we'll be looking for in September and you know, we're playing Portugal in September. And that's it's gonna be such a big game like to play, like like who do you play? How do you play it? Who like who's gonna play in the backs? You know, it's a massive, massive game. But yeah, O'Shea did struggle there tonight, but you know, he's not the only one. A lot of players have struggled recently. A lot of good players have struggled recently. So he's definitely not the only one. 100%, 100 Sean, what did you think about that? Um, I, I think it's an interesting point Keith made about having a left side of the centre half and maybe it would balance things. I still think Darrow O'Shea is a capable defender and, you know, I'm, I'm not going to rate him off after tonight. But um, I, we, we definitely gave the ball away a lot trying to play it out from the back and uh, that was that was concerning. Uh, you know, if we do that against Portugal, you know, we really get torn apart. Um, uh, I, uh, it, w- it was encouraging, I think, to see. It was encouraging, I think, to see them try and play out from the back. And you know, maybe look, it's the first game they played in front of a crowd, and I don't know. Oh, Keith is gone. Who's in charge now? Work away. <laughs> Work away. Um, but, but, um, uh, yeah, I, th- I thought. Um, I think sometimes. Uh, where was I? I before that yeah i was um maybe it's the first game you know they played in front of a crowd and to be fair to the hungarians you know they generated an atmosphere like they were singing from the first minute to the 90th and you know it was good to see uh, very you know a bit unusual these days but you know good to see um i think it's, I think it's, that, uh... it's, it's, unusual, it's an unusual comment to make but um i think when the hungarians were pressing high today i think the time is you don't have to be long ball merchants, but if a long ball is on, 
play it over the top once and see, see how it goes. Hmm. I was actually going to say there that's a good point because there was a time there towards the end where Hungary had four or five players in front of our three backs at the time. It was just made no sense like to be playing it around there. You just didn't need to do it. One pass just over them. You had four other players out of the game. You know, instantly if we could find a pass, you could set a counter then and you're going to create three v twos and two v ones in the wings. They didn't do that. They kept trying to play out and. You know, doing that against seemingly like Portugal where they'll be pressing like a unit, that's going to kill us if we if we do that. By no ways am I saying to go back to how we were playing. Just if it's on, it's on. If it's not on, don't do it. There was no need to be playing that around like the way they were at times. That's okay against Hungary, but the bigger teams now, you know, they'll snatch that up and, you know, you could concede that way. It'd be a terrible way to concede a goal. Yeah, exactly. Keith, any thoughts on that? I, I think, in fairness, we tried to lift it up a little bit tonight. Um, there was a few long balls. Yeah. I know Duffy played the ball into the channel, which I had to chase. Um, so there's no harm in doing that every so often. Um, because that touched on. Portland will kill us. One, one slight touch from a player. One, two pass, Ronaldo, Fernandez, whoever. They're in, you know. We can't afford to be messing about. There was a few times tonight Duffy had a poor touch in the box. Just clear the ball. Just get it up the pitch. You don't have to be doing all this fancy stuff. Um, uh, you, you you say about Ida. I say he's definitely he's de- he needs to bulk up a bit. That's the only problem with him. he needs to he needs to bulk himself up a bit. Um, James Collins kind of builds, you know, just to just to hold off players a little bit better. But, he's um, a better player though than James Collins already. Yeah, he's, he already certainly he certainly has a better touch. He certainly has a better touch, you know. Um I think I think what he needs, he just needs what Jason Knight had the other night, Troy Parrot, just needs to get off the mark. Yeah, 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 I agree with that as well. As well as his injuries have been a bit of concern. Even tonight he picked up an injury. Well, he picked up an injury, but a knock and you're thinking, oh no, because he's a player that just needs consistently to be fit at this stage as well. Um, but yeah, Josh Cullen was a bit of an odd one tonight because I think I mentioned they played well. But at the same time, I think gave away the ball cheaply a lot in the game as well. Did you think that? Yeah, I thought I think, uh, Daz touched yeah, on yeah. it. Oh, sorry. sorry, Dad. John, you no, go No, go on. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah, well, I, I think Daz touched on it earlier. I said piece of delivery is very poor. It's kind of floated things in, you know, and they were going way too far, and uh, I think, now, to be fair, I think he had the one good set piece towards the start, that was the one that led to Egan's header off the crossbar. Um, he's, uh, he's 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 doing okay for himself at Anderlecht. He, he appears to, uh, you know, have a bit of a hot blood in him, because, you know, he's, he's a, you know, he likes, he likes to tackle. I like, um, I like Josh Cullen, but, uh, you know, uh, I think we need to start seeing some improvement from him if he if he wants to keep his place in the team because uh, Keith touched on it as well that Jason Malumbi uh, came on and you know he he was very good. Uh, he offered a lot going forward as well. So um, yeah, I, I suppose you know look, it's, uh, friend, don't want to be too harsh on him, but uh, uh, you know we are going into the World Cup for, uh, qualifiers. We have no more matches, um, so I think this is what we go off. Yeah, Daz, what point are you going to make there? Yeah, hello. Look, I agree with everything you said there, Sean. Um, I was probably going to say pretty much the same thing. Like, I did think at times he just wasn't playing a simple pass when he was on. And he's someone who's very capable of playing a simple pass, and it, that makes him a great player. Some of the best players do the simple things right all the time, and it makes a world of difference in the team when you have someone you can depend on to make that pass, to make that tackle, to make that decision correct, especially in midfield. And I think those two things, you know, he's playing with Anderlecht. We don't really see him. And let's be honest, no one watches the Belgium League. We don't watch it. No one watches it. Anyone that says they've watched him play, they haven't. No one really watches that league. We've probably seen highlights. You probably look at him in live score, but we don't really watch the league, you know. So we can't say, oh, he's playing great out there. He could be playing Waffle out there. We just don't really know. You can go on his ratings. You can go on live score. But 
bottom line is no one we're not really watching him we don't really know how he's doing out there well i don't anyway and a lot of people i've been talking about don't but as i was saying there if he could get the ball and do the same things right all the time he'd be a number one in the team because he's someone you can depend on but tonight he gave away a lot of sloppy passes when he really didn't need that and he could have kept the ball sometimes he you know he didn't so that was a bit of a concern for me someone in the comments just said there watch it religiously <laughs> <laughs> that's good though to see that somebody does <laughs> I'm sure that's a piss take but anyway, the funny thing is yeah I mean it's funny how everyone's brilliant until they get into the team and then all of a sudden they're tight like, with Josh Cullen I don't think it's either or I just think he's a decent player um, Malumpy I think is a player with a bit more potential in my opinion because I think uh, he's got a little bit of everything as, uh, for a midfielder like he can pass and get forward as John said I think earlier Track back and get tackled in, and the Tom says about a bit as well. Um, there's a bit of I'm not saying there's a bit of a Roy Keane about him in that sense, you know what I mean? And um, so I think going forward, eventually he'd probably eventually get inside, if I'm honest. Uh, again, only 21 as well, so we're talking about Laurie Youngster, which is great as well. So, like, I mean, you look at all those players that played tonight, and I said a lot of them, I mean, the two goalkeepers as well, to give serious credit as well. Uh, the Zoom made a very good play first half, something on the ball. Kelleher made two fairly quick reaction saves as well in the space of about two minutes. And I tell you, the future is fine for guarding goalkeepers. We still have Randolph, remember, too, lads. What do you think, Derky? Yeah, I going into the qualifiers, like Randolph hasn't played much this season, obviously. Um, mm. And Kelleher played a few Champions League games and he played quite well for Liverpool. Yeah. Um, I actually... I. I disagree. I think uh, with Daz, I think Kelleher's saves were better. I, I, did you say Kelleher's saves were better than Anzu or or not? But I thought Kelleher's No, no, I, I said they both played very well. <laughs> oh, in fairness, they did. and uh, It was a great save from Gavin in the first half. But Kelleher's saves, like, you know, he's, uh, it was a t- tip of a finger. T- tips him over the bar, both within a couple of minutes of each other, you know. And, that was class. Oh, brilliant! Absolutely brilliant! And yeah. just just to go back on the midfield, Keith. Um, I think the elephant in the room, Connor Hurahan, had a dreadful game. Absolutely dreadful. Um, the passes went astray, and what a season! He had a great season with Swansea. And as you say, what is it that they come into the Ireland team and they do nothing? They do absolutely nothing. So. I don't know. I, I definitely got Hurahan. Um I know his set pieces. He's good at set pieces. Um, and again, Duffy going up and he yeah, offers that. Like, you can't have anyone carry someone in the team because they're good at set pieces either, sure you can. No, no, absolutely not. Um, I think Cullen and Malumbi starting together maybe for us. Nice. You're going with a three man. Nice. And Knight, nice, yeah. And Knight, nice, yeah. Not forgetting Knight. Nice. He had a great season with Derby. But um, yeah, mm. those would be my three starting uh, players for the for the Portugal game. Yeah, I think that's key. Though, just looking ahead to the Portugal game quickly. For start, look, it's going to be a very different game, regardless. Like, I mean, if, if Portugal, uh, be interesting how we, how we approach the game. But we've got three games in that uh, little spell, so we need to have something. Kenny, in all honesty, hasn't had a fairly big squad with at least like if we miss the nine ten players most of the time. Let's be honest about it. Um, in a way, it worked out in my in my uh, opinion for the future because we've blooded in so many young players and in competitive matches as well. It's going to help them and it's a little stronger, I think, more competitive. So um, the next three games in September, isn't it? Yeah, so yeah. September. The next yeah. Three games in September is going to be interesting in that sense. You can't expect much from Portugal, but it's still it's always interesting. But um. Yeah, are we confident ahead of those two games of what we, we can do and maybe get a result or two? We've had Jan and we have, who's the other one? Is it Serbia? I think it's Qatar again. Is it? It's, uh, oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think it's Qatar, yeah. Yeah, that, I don't know. Yeah, it's a funny one, that, isn't it? But anyway, how confident are we going into that that maybe we're stronger than we were in terms of experienced players getting experience and stuff like that? Uh, I don't know, six months ago, seven months ago, whatever. I think you hit the nail on the head, Keith. You need a fit squad. You need a fully fit squad. If you don't have a fully fit squad, like, you know, you're just back to, to square one. 
I mean, especially Kenny, the two games of Chris Kershaw, isn't it? Yeah. Kenny has been so lucky. Um, you think of the playoff, the Conley COVID case. You know, you're going over there. You know, would he have made a difference? Probably. Um, but if you have a fully fit squad, let's let's eliminate the Portugal game. Probably not expecting if you get anything out of that, it'd be a bonus. Mm. But uh, you're looking to be Qatar and you're looking to be Azerbaijan, and and then that's another step in Kenny's in Kenny's uh, story. Like so, um, I I'd write off Portugal then. I'd forget it completely. Mm. I mean, they're just far better than us in other classes. You can't really. Uh, you know, I mean, Azerbaijan match we obviously have. To- I've said it before, but I've kind of written it off the campaign, to be honest with you. I'm not so bad way. I mean, written it off in terms of um, there's certain fans that demand to qualify for the tournaments. Do you know what I mean? Um, I wouldn't be in that boat. I mean, for a small enough nation as it is, there's no way to get made to in that boat. What? I'm in that boat. I want to qualify for everything. Yeah, but look, if you qualify, great. But at the same time, I'm trying to see the bigger picture as well. You know that guy does. Overall, we've had the worst Ireland squad for a long, long time, and we're trying to build yeah. a new squad, a new identity. And, and I'm trying to look at it that way, Sean. What's your thoughts? You're obviously younger, so uh, I love your thoughts. Be the same the world. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm kind of in the same boat as Daz. I want to qualify for everything. Like I've never seen Ireland in a World Cup, like so. You know. Oh, no, I'm it, not it, <laughs> Yeah, but uh, look, uh, look. I think it's a valid point that we can write off this 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 campaign as, as tough as it is to say. I think our fate was sealed when we lost to Luxembourg. You know, I don't think anyone was expecting us to qualify anyway. But the fact that we did it in such a disappointing fashion really put a damper on things. Uh, the, the game against Portugal, it's really, you know, I I, I think. You can write off getting a win, but I think you do take it into account because of the test against one of the best teams in the world, and that will, you know, really, you know, that's you know, that's really, it doesn't get much better than that. So you know, it'll be a great opportunity for the lads, and I agree with Rakit said. I hope we, I hope we have a full squad, we have our best eleven out there, so we can see, you know, what what we're really made of going up against one of those teams. I, I hope now that if we did go up against one of those teams. We we try it more of the adventure we showed in the second half tonight, and you know, try and take the game in patches towards Portugal and uh, test it, you know. So um, it, we you know look we might get beaten three or four nil, but you know I would like to see us show a bit of adventure. Yeah, yeah, that's it too. I mean, um, like the way I'm thinking of it there, going back to my original point about uh, kind of writing off the campaign, and um, the. This- I mean, writing off the campaign, we still have a lot to play for as such because we're trying to build a new team as such, but using this experience in the campaign as such, you know what I mean? It's huge. But also the fact that if we had, say Mick McCarthy, just an example, was still there, we'd still struggle to qualify in my opinion because we'd have a lot of older players who probably wouldn't have blooded some of the new players as well. And where does that lead going forward? Yeah, Daz, just to touch, put it on record, I want to qualify for everything as well, but there's no guy given right to qualify. So. We don't actually want to qualify. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. No, yeah. but you, you talk about you talk about McCarthy. At the end of the day, last time out, we got to the playoff against Slovakia because of what O'Neill did, not McCarthy. You know, you have to remember, he didn't get us to that playoff. We finished third in that group. You know, and we didn't so, win many games, and we only scored five goals in that qualifying campaign as well, too, by the way. But this is the problem that's here before now, is what I'm trying to suggest. And three of them were against Gibraltar, where you should be scoring six, sevens. That's when you have a God-given right to score six and seven, or, or you know, if, you, if you're matching that up with qualifying. But, uh, Pete, actually, just before you go on there, I think Pete, that Ken would deserve more criticism too. We were much better, say, on the McCarthy, which we, we clearly weren't. Let's be honest yeah. there. Yeah. Like, we struggled away to Gibraltar. Jeff Hendricks scored the only goal of the game, you know. I know the circumstances were great. There was wind blowing around and stuff like that, but... Um, and Randolph yes. made that unbelievable save. Unbelievable. And he, he kept us in the game. He, did, he Like, could you imagine? It could have been another San Marino. Like, going... Yeah, it could have been. Mm-hmm. So, um... 
Let, I, I said we'll write off first game. I agree with you, Keith. Let's let's put our, our, our foot forward. Let's give them a game. Let's try and give them a game. If you if as Sean said, if you lose four 0 that's okay. But if you give if you give the fans what they're looking for and have a bit of pride in the shirt, that's good enough for me. The issue there, Keith, is I agree with you, by the way, but the issue there is lads is the fact that um, I don't know, I just think there's a there's a fan base out there that no matter what we do at the moment, they're gonna get criticized. So if we park the bus in Portugal and lose, we'll be criticized. If we go for against Portugal and lose, there'll be that mass Um I don't know what it is, but um I, I don't really understand it to be honest at the moment in that kind of way, because as I said, we struggled badly at the end of O'Neill's tenure. Uh, when Robbie Keane, etc., players left, uh, we're left with the worst squad. I'm not even blaming Mick McCarthy. I don't think Mick McCarthy did a bad job. I just that's what we had, like you know what I mean. But I just I don't get. I don't know. Some people just see that we should be qualifying for tournaments. I, I don't see that, guys. Really, what do you think? At this well, minute, I, I think. I think, firstly, just to go back a little bit there against about the Portugal match, I might be people might think a bit mad for saying this, but I would I'd never write off any game. We're comfortable of beating anyone on our day, like you know, on a bit of luck and a long ball your way or something, a set piece. You, we're capable of winning any game. Like no, no game is right off to me. But um, in terms of qualifying for tournaments, uh, people might take this. You know, this is a matter of opinion now. Um, I personally. Would sooner rather us, us play bad football and qualify for a tournament than play good football but not qualify for a tournament. Now that's just me. Not many people are different. Yes, I'll just say there. That's no fair enough. That's a fair point. But I suppose my point kind of is at the moment we're not qualifying no matter what football we play. In my opinion, that's my point. Yeah, no, look, we're not. Like, and the thing is. Kenny is, you know, in transition. He's trying to change the way we play. He's trying to blow in these new young players because there hasn't been a time. There's been six, seven years, and no one really knew came into the team. And we've had players retiring. Nobody else really came in. So suddenly he's left with these like really young players to come in and turn around the clubs not being played. So he suddenly has to manage these players and somehow gel them together and make them play like a season pro when they're not a season pro at the minute. When they're not the finished article. And, People are expecting the likes of Tri Power to go out and score every game. It's not going to happen. He's only a kid. You know, he scored two goals against Andorra. That's grand. That's Andorra, 158 in the world. Where was he tonight? You know, he needs time to develop and Kenny needs time. That's the way it's going to be. And he wants to change the way we play. And he is changing the way we play. But if he wants to do that, he needs to get results as well. So it's going to be very interesting to see where it all goes. I think, yeah, I agree with you, Tony. I think as well, though, Sean, with the results as well, obviously as well, documentary, we've only won one match, etc., etc., etc. But like, people often say injuries isn't an excuse at all, but it is an excuse if you're missing 10, 11, 12 players, which we have been. Let's be honest. I mean, this is the Republic of Ireland. I mean, if any of them missing that, they'd be moaning. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I think injury, like, we've been very unlucky with injuries over the past uh, uh, few weeks. And it, it, it ex- or past few um international windows um but um you, you know i think uh, i think it shows you know look it's down to our population we can't really control it but it does show that we don't have a great depth in our quality of players you know once our firm um and goes uh you know we really are lacking i think that will i think that will improve as we see these players see the young generation of players um improve and step up i think that I think that won't be as big of a problem anymore. But as for now, you know, uh, it's really, uh, it's really a problem. And as you mentioned, like there is always uh, a section of the fan base that will look at the result and say, you know, you know, decide that Kenny has to go on the basis of that. But to be fair to the FAI, they did say after the Luxembourg game that you know they would give him until the end of the World Cup qualifiers before making a decision on his future. And I think that was the right decision. You know, I think, uh, you know, I think, you know, being hopeful, uh, Kenny will have shown that, you know, the future is bright by then and that, you know, we'll be able to give a, a right go qualification for the Euros in 2020, then the war in the USA in 26. 
So yeah, no, I agree. 100%. Uh, like, you know, like, John, at, like at worst, Kenny's going to be seen as the manager at worst that blundered through a lot of young players, whereas a lot of other managers would be scared to do so. And we're you know, bigger pay, mm. bigger wages, etc., etc., etc. That's what I want to be personally. He may not be the manager uh, going forward. Yeah, I think the right manager going forward, perhaps once he brings mm. it through, maybe. I don't know the answer mm. to that, but at the moment, I think it's the perfect manager for what yeah. we're going to do. Mm. Uh, I think as well as that, though, yeah. the fact that... Sorry, Sean. Oh, sorry, I, I was just going to say there, I was just going to say there, I think the fact that Stephen Kenny's from the League of Ireland, he's going to get a lot of hate of a section of supporters for that one reason, and no matter what he does, it's not going to be right because of that one reason. They'll be saying, who did you manage? What team were you over? Who did you play for? And it's just going to go back to the same story. You're from the League of Ireland. What would you know? And that there's always going to be people. If we qualify for the tournament, there'd still be people saying Kenny out. There would be. They'd be saying he's not up to it. He's he got there and look. He got there whatever. And that's the way it's going to be with Kenny because of where he came from. Yeah, and ironically, ironically, our most uh, decorated manager in terms of playing career, Steve Stanton, was probably the worst manager I've ever seen this time in my life. Yeah, absolutely. You know, but I agree with you 100%. And then you get people that will say, because you're a League of Ireland fan, the only reason why you're supporting it. I don't give two shits, like, if you're League of Ireland or not, to be honest with you. And um, I've watched James work at under 21 level and I've seen him work with these players, and uh, I think he's the best man for that at the moment. He may not be the best man in the future to bring us to a, a World Cup or um, maybe next Euro. It's like, you know what I mean? I don't know, like, that's something we have to look at in the future. But for right now, I think he is. What do you think? It's mad. If he, if he had a, if he had a stage with the 21s, days, he probably would have qualified. 100%. We were in such a good position and he was doing so well with the 21s. People were lauding him. Oh, Kenny this, Kenny that. We've had years of Noel King and Don Gibbons and blah, blah, blah. He changed Irish underage football. He changed it. And he changed it for the better. And now he comes into the senior role and people are, oh, he's not up for it. He's not this. He's not that. Give the guy, I know he's been in the job, what is it, 15 months? And he hasn't had a lot of success. But we go back to it again and again. The look he has been thrown has not been good. Give him a full strength squad. Let him get like John Egan said during the week, they've had nine days together over the last two weeks. You can try like Egan, over, taking over John Holden, like is a different design, let's be honest. Absolutely. Like you think of like the Aviva Stadium, a full house or at least thirty five, forty thousand people roaring that team on against against, let's say, Luxembourg. We wouldn't have lost that game if, if there was fans in that ground. There's no doubt about it. We wouldn't have lost that game. You know, if we had had fans in Slovakia at the playoff, you know, you know how we travel. Yeah. We probably would have won that game. You know, so it's been very tough for, for Stephen. I feel sorry for him. And I go back to what Daz said. People do slag me. You're a League of Ireland man. You're just supporting me. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. I think he deserved a chance. I think he deserved a chance of what he done with twenty ones. It was a step up for him, and it hasn't worked out for him as of yet. But you remember Mick McCarthy, as you said, when he first came in after Charlton, he had to rebuild a squad as well. He had, to rebuild. A squad to rebuild. He had a you all the retirements he had. You know all these senior citizens that were going out, McGraths, your Cascarinos and stuff. He was lucky with his Keens and Stones. I said it the other night. These players, Troy Parrott has been on loan at Ipswich. He hasn't really set the world on fire there. If he, if he was any good, he'd be in the Spurs team. But you give him a chance to develop. Daz said, why is he 19, Daz? Yeah. Yeah, 19. He's only a kid. He's only a kid. Like So these guys need a chance. Adam Oida has probably played more international football this season than he has for his club. Purely because yeah. he's not pure has been a better a better player and he's, he's got them promotion with his goals. So and he was injured as well too. He doesn't help. And he was either. injured, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he got that hat trick against Preston North End in the cup. You know, fantastic. But give these guys a chance, you know. They're not gonna walk into a team and walk around players like we we hope they do in the future. 
but let's give them a chance, you know. There's a comment from someone there from someone tell you give Kenny a P forty five painful to watch. And I'll say this, he's painful to watch, all right? I'll throw this back at him in fairness. Have people forgotten what we were like under McCarthy and at the back end in the morning when it's raining? I mean, some of those matches are dreadful. We drew nil nil at the Northern Ireland, and Northern Ireland had seventy percent possession. This is a team, you know what I mean? Georgia nil nil was another one. There were some dreadful. Well, he's, 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 my worst, my worst viewing of an Ireland team was under O'Neill when we lost that playoff five one to Denmark in the Viva Stadium. That was that was the low, the low for me supporting it and. It, Mm. Yeah, that's it. Like, that was the only time I've ever walked out of a stadium before the final whistle. Like, I, I, I was lucky I did because I would have had to see the ignominy of seeing Nicholas Benton score a penalty against our team. So <laughs> yeah, well, that's, true, where, that's, yeah, that's where it comes from for me, lads, as well. Is the fact that, um, like, if we were very successful and had these great results recently, like, 2016, we've done well to get to the, to the Euros, to be fair. But um, we did a good job on that as well. But we still we probably had a better squad slightly. I'm not saying we didn't do a good job. We did do a good job. But it had tailed off. This has tailed off since about, since after the Euros, actually. Since that point, we've tailed off completely since. So, again, I'll say it again. I don't know if people are here, but it's not as if uh, we've taken over some successful team that was playing great football, scoring goals, getting great results. Um it wasn't happening, so we need a rebuild. There's young players coming through. I do think he's um, Murumbi, for example, is another one there. He struggled with it to get anywhere near the bright team, in and out of Preston, even. What did you expect? A magic wand here. Like, how many of these players are actually. And I think he's going to be talented. I really like Jason Mount. But at this minute, time he's playing for Derby in the Championship as well. I'm not really sure about what we're expecting here. I, I think that's the point I'm making. He wants to jump in. Hmm. Go on, Daz. Uh, I think. Yeah. yeah, look, you're dead right, Keith, and you're dead right in everything you said there. Like, you know, but I think people are forgetting too. The days are gone of a young player on a top team and playing. They're, they don't happen, and they don't happen very soon. Even Kelleher, he's on a top team, but he plays a handful of games, right? These young players need to go out and need to start playing games, need to go on loan, need to learn, need to develop. There's no point in sitting at home in your club and not playing and then expect to get into the Ireland team and people expect that player to play well. That's not going to happen, you know. And the days of you know, players coming to, as I said, overseas, going to Man United, going to Liverpool, Chelsea, it's not happening. And they are scouting all these other foreign nations and they're bringing in foreign talent. They're not looking here anymore. They don't want to look here anymore. And <laughs> to those clubs that have to play for two or three years, someone will be brilliant to get a move to those clubs. Really. Yeah, and look, like you said, like it's just it's 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 very hard for players to do this, but the, these players that are here there tonight, they need to be playing club football. They need to go out, need to learn. Very very young. I think at one stage we had four or five under twenty ones on the pitch. And then you had O'Shea and you had Keller, who were 22. So you're looking at, that's a, one of the youngest teams I've ever seen Ireland play anywhere. Yeah, that's true. And I, I, think, I do think I agree with you there, but I think Sean pointed as well, I suppose. I'd still rather these guys get the goal instead of your Jeff Hendrick playing every week and your Robbie Brady's at this point. Brady's finished, let's be honest, in injury after injury. I, I, you know, I'd rather go that way. What, there's no purpose in there playing those type of players regularly. John. Yeah, I've just, I've just seen a comment here. Uh, so, oh. the, yeah, the, so for, for me, look at Gav compared to Gallagher this year. Gav went down to Rochdale and Grand, like they went down, but he got his experience. Yeah. I think so, that's something that worries me about Kelleher. He's um he's 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 staying at Liverpool, and fair enough, he proved he's he's maybe stepping up to the plate tonight. But I I don't think he's going to get the experience he needs uh, at Liverpool. Um, Vizunu said, um, this, I don't know how his Rochdale teammates feel about this, but he said he enjoyed being at a team that was, you know, on the brink of going down because it meant he, he, was, he was always busy. Um, but um, I, I think it doesn't mean, doesn't mean Kelleher needs to go to 
uh, you, you know, being Kelly or Goda was sinking shape. But you know, uh, go somewhere where go somewhere where you're, you know, the you're the number one choice. Uh, get get the game turned into you, and I think I, I think it'd be better for. Her. No, I agree actually because I think I was thinking about this actually a few days ago with Brazilian there. He would have been playing like in a league where crosses would be flying in from these physical lads, and he would have been getting battered and bruised. That's what you need. Keller is in a delicate situation, in my opinion. Though, if Allison gets injured, what would happen? He's in the team. But if Allison doesn't get injured, then he's stuck. It's a, it's a difficult one because he's at Liverpool. Like, mm. how would you manage that if you're on grieving Keller's head there? Like, what do you do? I don't know. Like uh, some players are just happy to sit in the bench, aren't they? Just earn the wage, you know. You know, some some of these, like Roy Keane, Roy Keane wouldn't have that. You know, he'd be like, get out and play, get out and play, yeah. earn your wage, earn your wage. But you have to understand as well, if Queen Kelleher is playing constantly for the Liverpool second team, the Premier League too, um, is quite a good standard. Mm. Um, so. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know. Like Gavin went to Ross. I think it's not even the standard keys. I think it's more the there'd be more pressure playing for like a Rochdale even. Right. Or not. Yeah, I mean, right. and there's this there's these big hurly burly strikers and I think it's what's your man playing for Newport? Kevin Ellison, he's forty three years of age, right? He's a big lad, like you know. And you want to yeah, absolutely getting the elbows in and stuff like that. And and it will bode well for Gavin in the future. And yeah. he only said during the week his aim is to be city number one. That's fantastic. That's that's brilliant to aim for. You know, we don't know if it'll work out for him at City because Ederson is such a top goalkeeper. But uh, if he went to a lower, more years you know, Ederson left, first you can just go out and buy a ready-made goalkeeper. hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. And Daz, Daz already, Daz already uh, said it. They don't go to your Chelsea's, your Arsenal's, your United's your, anymore. Like, look at poor James McCarthy. He's been let go by Palace. He was, for me, he was one of our top performers when he was fit and when he turned up for Ireland. I, he would be my first player on, on, on the team. Injuries are simple, though. It's just injuries. Injuries. Yeah. yeah. More you, said about, you said about Brady... He's, he's still living off the goal against Italy in the Euros. Hendrick had to go to the Euros. What has he done since, you know? These lads, we said it to you tonight. Kenny needs oh, to face him out a little bit, so. Right, lads, I think we'll leave it there. Thanks for joining me. That was good. I enjoyed that. Uh, that was my point of clarity from my point of view, but moved room, so uh, there you go. And uh, cheers. Thanks for watching, guys. Subscribe, click the bell notification button, and like the video. Cheers, guys. Cheers, lads. Cheers after, all right? Take care. Thank you. Thanks for joining me. Cheers. All right.